1 Samuel chapter 30, David, powerful David, himself and his men, very powerful uh, 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 soldiers. But this one day, they went looking for what to eat, and their enemies were, came to stab them at the back. The enemies came to burn down their camp, carry all their wives, carry their children. And the Bible says when they came, they wept, including David, they wept until they had no more power to weep. Come on. This year, God will send people into your life that will cancel your weeping. Yeah. That amen is weak, oh. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. So they wept, they wept, they wept, they wept. But David took courage and encouraged himself in the Lord. He said, Lord, should I pursue? God said, pursue. So he was pursuing, 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 pursuing. And he came into a wilderness. And he met a half-dead man. Notice, half-dead. He was an Egyptian. When you get to him, 1 Samuel chapter 30, you can read it. So he left the pursuing of the people who carried his wife. Ooh, and his children. He stopped. To minister to this half dead man. Are you still here? What would I have thought? Maybe some of the sons, Mr. David, what are you doing? What are you doing? In fact, the people have spoken of stoning him. But the time he now stopped to say, Give him food. Let, let. They will kill on Sheman. If I don't see my wife, I will kill you. But David knew what he was doing, he knew the power of people. Bible says, when that man revived, he said, who are you? He said, I'm, I'm an Egyptian. I'm a servant of an Amalekite. Three days ago, my, my master and his friends raided a particular camp. They said, what's the name of the camp? He called the name. Praise God. He said, ah, they are the ones who are looking for you. He said, I will take you there. Just promise you won't kill me. That's, Bible says, they recovered all. Nothing was lost to them. This year, you are recovering all. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. Amen. We are doing, oh! <laughs> Listen, this room is full of young people. Hear my word. If you don't hearken or understand any message again this year, understand this one. If you understand this one, you have mastered life. I'm telling you. you have, I see a lot of young people, they miss it. Proverbs chapter 11, so that in case I, 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 I will, so that I will not forget to read it. Proverbs 11, verse 12. Quickly, give us. Proverbs 11, verse 12. Macro de bina kushtaga balarabo sata. God will sponsor relationships into your life. Promotion bringing relationships. Favor provoking relationships. Uh, 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 relationships that will preserve your destiny and preserve your pathway in the name of Jesus. Can we all read it together? I want to go. Stop. Read it once again. Now, put your name there. Personalize it. If I am devoid of wisdom, then I will despise my neighbor. Esa, oponuba. Anybody who despises people. <laughs> Are you still here? Paul, have you heard that? Complete fool. This, this poor man. What can he do for me? <laughs> David didn't say that. He didn't say that this dying Egyptian. That dying Egyptian held the key to his recovery. It was God who told him he would recover. But the miracles that the, the prophecy that God gave him could not come to pass but through people. God can say all he would this year that is a year of reputable glory. If you don't supernaturally contact the people who will walk that glory into your life and know how to harness them at the end of the day, the person, somebody, it's possible for somebody to even be less than he started this year. Are you still here? Seven things, very quickly, I'll just mention them. How to maximize people. How to make the most and the best of relationships. 
The way we said it now, some people, somebody's mind will, will go, okay, I was saying use people. No. So number one, don't use people. Rather, let people use you. Put that in bracket. Okay, let me put it better. Don't use people. Rather, be useful to people. Yes. David was useful to the dying man. Are you still here? Naaman must have been useful to that girl. Saul must have been useful to that servant. Am I communicator? Don't you? I see many people, they use people. Only when he knows, he's a student, that school term is running to an end or another school term is beginning, and he knows he doesn't have money, so we'll see him in church. After service, he will come and greet me, Pastor Chris, well done. <laughs> the reason he's greeting me is so that I will know he's still a member of the Eastern Church. Because two weeks later, he will ask, he will say, Pastor, School fees I don't have. User, uh, users of men. <laughs> so initially I used to fall into that trap a lot. Fall into that trap a lot. Fall into that trap. But after some time, when my white hair started coming out, I became wiser. Praise the Lord. <laughs> don't use people. Are you still here? Don't use people. So I needed to put that from be useful to people. But so let's start from the beginning again. Number one attract the right relationships. Because as good as relationships are, relationships can also destroy you. Are you still here? The relationships can make you or mar you. Many people have died, destroyed, lost their destinies by reason of relationship. Am I communicating? So how do you attract the right relationships? Work on yourself to be the right person. Because relationships are attracted if you have the right relationship, the right relationship coming to your life, but you are not the right person, you will lose that relationship. Be the right person. How are you the right person? Um, how can you become the right person? Be, be the right person. How can you become the right person? By adding value to yourself. Add value to yourself. Be empowered with something to give. That dying man had an information that David needed. That girl had an information that Naaman needed. Are you still here? That servant. Do you think that servant that took Saul to Samuel that day, do you think when Saul became the king that he would discard that servant? No. Be empowered. That's why I talk a lot about going to school. Whether officially, formally, or informally. Have something to give, sir. Don't be empty. People run away from people who don't have anything to offer. I can't find that scripture. It can't come to my heart now. Bible says, even the brothers of the poor man despise him and run away from him. Because every time he shows up, sir, it is, uh, um, can I have some uncle? Can I have some too? He's his brother who he, he has forgotten because of beggarly mentality. He's calling his sibling uncle. Maybe he did uncle. <laughs> God will not make you like that. Amen. That amen is weak. Amen. Be empowered. Have something to offer. When people see you, their hearts will rejoice. Not when they say, uh, uh, they say somebody, he says from your village, tell him I'm not here. Holy Spirit, forgive me for this lie. I want to lie now. Tell him I'm not here. <laughs> Are you still here? Have something to offer. Part of being, having something to offer is work on your character. This lie, lying every time. Uh, uh, always lying. People can pin you down. Not sincere. People, it will make people run from you. It, it, it confers a terrible smell on your personality. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Part of working on yourself, be understandable and be understanding. Write it down. Some people are not understandable. You, even their parents cannot say, this is the kind of person my son is. Today is blue. Tomorrow is black. He's like a camelon. Even if you ask him, what is your, what do you like? He can't say. So, 
The understandable starts by studying yourself. We are going to talk about that later you, uh, in one of the services. You, you have to master yourself, sir, and try and be yourself. Praise the Lord. So I, I think that's number two. We are talking about how to uh, 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 maximize relationship. Learn the right things from people. Be willing to learn and make sure it's the right thing you are learning from people. You are in a church like that. You have mentors. Learn the right things from them. Don't go about being cocky. Uh, be teachable. That's what I'm saying. Be teachable. We are saying it. Everybody comes here. They are saying They are saying Learn one or two things from every service. Stop doing like this. Praise the Lord. I said praise God. I said praise God. I have one minute more, but I have, I have to say this. I'm being natural party today. Natural party has blessed me. Some people don't like me. Say it has blessed me. And it's blessing me. I went to my uncle yesterday who has written close to 200 books. He said, try and bring out a book every year. I said, uncle, this year, before the half of the year, I will bring out like six. Say, that's very good. Praise God. How did I come into naturopathy? I came into Daystar. I wanted to do full-time pastoring. I thought I had hung my stethoscope. And then my pastor said, he started DLA, Daystar Leadership Academy. There was a course there, personal health management. And he said, take it. So I started taking it. I started taking it. That's what brought me here today. Praise the Lord. Relationships. One of my friends was doing a program on Dove Television, a relationship program. So he said, he will not be in town. That he, I also am good in relationships. Can I go and speak? So I went to speak. So I was telling Tolu, the producer then, uh, uh, that I can, this is a singles relationship program. I can create a married relationship program. She said, oh, we have too many relationship programs. But uh, you're a doctor now. Why can't you create a, a, a content around health? So I said, it's true. So I took what we we're doing in personal health management, and then I started talking about it. That's relationships. I have to drop your mic now. Praise the Lord. Learn the right things from people. Are you still here? Add value to them. Next one, love and care for people genuinely. Ah, don't despise people. That poor man who seems to have nothing today. He can be the brother or the uncle or the village man of somebody that you will need his help tomorrow. Are you still here? You are here. Stop fighting. Love, you can hear me. I'm not saying that love fights everybody. But stop fighting. Because 20 children don't play together for 20 years. After some time, you people will start scattering. It is the taste you leave in the mouth of John that will make him, when he gets to Afghanistan, no, Canada, and then maybe some years later, you will say, John, hey, I need to come into Canada. Can you help? It is the taste you leave in his mouth that will make him say yes or no by that time. <laughs> 